Faith is an integral part of the believer's life. We cover eight important areas where the believer must necessarily walk by faith. All right, so we're going to get ready to make our declaration this morning. So if you don't mind, could we all rise to our feet? Uh, let's hold our Bibles high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word. I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I advance boldly to take new ground, to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority wasted in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back. Or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot, cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you, shake hands, say hello. Uh, greet them, welcome them, give them a good smile, share your name with them, and you may be seated, please. The last several weeks, we've been spending time just studying on this subject of faith, and we're going to spend uh, several weeks more on this topic of faith. Uh, we talked about uh, various aspects of this. We talked about God's sovereignty and grace and faith, how these interplay. Uh, we talked about what Jesus taught and how Jesus ministered around this whole uh, subject or, or the whole issue of faith uh, and uh, how what were the things that Jesus taught us concerning faith. And last Sunday, uh, we took a quick look at the Old Testament, how people in the Old Testament walked by faith in God, and we uh, outlined the steps of the faith of Abraham. I hope all of you remember that. The steps of the faith of Abraham. This morning, uh, we're just going to build a, a little bit more in this study on faith. And I want us to just look at the believer's walk of faith. The believer's walk of faith. Or I want to emphasize the importance that faith has in the life of of the believer. And we must understand that this, this, this whole issue of faith is very integral, is a very important part of our lives as believers. And I just want to highlight a few of these, just eight of these. Uh, you can add to this list. There will be many more that you will find in scripture uh, that you can say, here's another reason why faith is so important uh, for the believer and for our walk of faith. But I just want to highlight a few of these this morning. The first of all, we know that we are saved by grace through faith. Now, this is very fundamental, very basic. We are saved by grace through faith. And we know this scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God. It is not of works, lest anyone should boast. So you see, God gives salvation freely by grace. He offers it to us. But on our part, we receive by faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Not by our own works. I mean, I can't work for it. We can't work for it. There's no amount of good works that we can do that God will say, well, now you cross the line. Here I give you salvation. That's not the way God does it in the Bible. The Bible tells us God offers salvation to us freely by grace. Because of what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. And we just receive it by faith. 
It's a free gift, but we receive by faith. So therefore, we can say that everything else that God does in our lives would follow the similar pattern. That is, we receive, God offers it to us by grace. We receive it by faith. So by grace, through faith. God's side, grace. Our side, faith. The greatest thing God does, did in our life, salvation, took on that pattern. God offered it to us freely by grace. We received it by faith and things in our lives changed. Therefore, everything that follows would, would, would walk, follow that same pattern. God is offering it to us by grace. We receive by faith. The second uh, important thing that we can highlight here uh, about uh, walking, the believer's walk of faith is everything must be done by faith. Or in faith or through faith. Everything must be done in faith. Uh, we know several scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says we, let's read it, walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith. That means everything in this life, this whole, uh, to walk means everything you do in life is going to be by faith, not by sight. Now that is not saying, therefore, get rid of your intellect, get rid of your intelligence, you don't need it. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, you, I mean, we use our intelligence, we use our logic, we use our reasoning, but there is something that supersedes that, that, that holds a higher place as far as we are concerned in our lives, and that is faith. Amen? So there are times, you know, there are things, of course, you see, you analyze, you reason, you understand, but then you always say, what does faith say in this situation? We live by faith, not by sight, right? Or Romans 1.17 says, as it is written there, that for in it the righteousness of, of God is revealed from faith to faith, the just shall live by faith. Right? The just, the people who are just, justified with God, who are walking righteous before God, the just shall live by faith. Now, to, to live by faith simply means everything I do has its origin in my faith in God. Everything I do must spring out of that. It must be inspired. It, it, it should originate out of faith in God. Now think about this verse in Romans 14, verse 23. Uh, Paul is writing in Romans 14 about what we eat, what we drink, about the, uh, what we observe and all that. Just day-to-day -day things of life. And there he says, for whatever is not, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. So he's talking about eating. It says, even eating, if you eat in doubt, say like, you're condemned. <laughs> Meaning God doesn't approve of that. And he says, but whatever you do, you do it in faith. Right? So, in, in, any, in anything in life, God says, I want you to do it out of faith. Even you're eating, let it be out of faith. Like Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4, you know, whatever is sold there, you buy it, you bring it, you, you do whatever, you, however you want to cook, you cook, and then you say, and you pray, and it is cleansed by prayer and by the word, and then you eat. You're eating in faith. You're eating in trusting God. That God blesses your bread and your water, as he said in Exodus 23, 25. The Bible says, I will bless your bread and your water and I will take all sickness out of your man. So you go eat in faith. God, I believe that your word is true. Yes, I pray. I prayed. I cleanse it. And I believe that you have blessed my bread and my water. So to live by faith means everything I do in life is consistent with what I believe. That's what it means to live by faith. Everything I do in life must be consistent with what I believe. That's to live by faith. That means how you think, how you speak, how you act is consistent with what you believe. That's living by faith. So you think in line with your faith. 
For instance, you go to the office Monday or some day in the week, you get some bad news. Oh, this is not going to work out, that's not going to work out. Some bad news comes. Yes, you're, uh, you're not denying the news, but how you think, act, and speak in that situation is consistent with what you believe. What do you believe? You believe God's word. His word says that he will bless you in all the work of your hands. His word says that you are blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. So you think, act, and speak even in that situation consistent with what you believe. That's living by faith. Are you understanding this? And God is saying, I want you to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith, not just by our own sight or by our own senses, our five physical senses. So that's the second thing. Number three, faith is key to receiving from God. So we're talking about the believer's walk of faith. What is the importance of faith uh, in the life of the believer? Faith is important. It's a key to receiving from God. Look at what James writes in James chapter 1 verses 5 and five through 7. He says, if any of you, that means this applies to all of us. This is an open invitation. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. And what does it tell us about God? God who gives. It didn't say God who is conjuice, right? It's a God who gives. So God is a giving God. Not a miserly God who says, I want to keep everything in heaven. No, he's a God who gives. And how, to how many people does he give? God who gives to all. So there is no partiality in his giving. Or you put it like this, there is, there is, he is an impartial God. God who gives, he gives to all. And how does he give? He gives liberally. So God is a generous giver. He gives liberally and without reproach. He doesn't complain. Oh no, you've come back again for some more? That's not how, that's not the nature of God. So there is no limitation on God's side. The Bible says if any will lack wisdom, let him ask God. Look, God is a giving God. He gives to all. He gives liberally and he gives without complaining. But, next verse. But let him ask in faith. So here's the key. There's no problem on God's side. But you ask in faith. Without wavering. For he who wavers is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man think that he will receive. What's the next word? What's the next word? Anything from the Lord. So verse five, verse 5, he starts talking about wisdom, but then he concludes in verse 7 saying, this is the way you and I receive anything from God. Anything from God. This is the way you receive. God is a generous God. He's a generous giver, a good giver. But we have to ask in faith. To receive anything from God, you ask in faith. So we must be clear in our hearts and minds that when it comes to receiving from God, always remember there is no limitation to God's ability or his generosity. Amen? There is no limitation to his ability or his generosity. It's an issue of you and me asking in faith. Is what James is saying. You ask in faith, you will receive. Number four, faith is the means to gain victory. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatever is born of God, whatever or whoever is born of God, overcomes the world. So John is writing, whoever is born of God overcomes the world. You see, God is saying, as a believer, you are born of God. And God is saying, you've been born to win. You've been born to overcome. To overcome means to have victory over. To gain mastery over. To be, uh, have superiority over. Whoever is born of God has been born to overcome. You are an overcomer. 
Well, that's why when we stand up and make our declaration, we say, I'm saved, I'm healed, you know, I'm blessed, I'm victorious, I'm prosperous, I'm triumphant. Why? Because that's what the Word of God declares about you. That you who have been born of God, you've been born to overcome. But notice what the verse continues. Says, but this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So this is the means by which you and I have victory over the world. It, it is through our faith in God. Now what does world represent? In, in, in the writings of the apostle John, and you look at John's writings, he uses the word world or cosmos to refer to anything that's of darkness. Anything that's of evil and rebellion. Anything that is against the ways, the will, and the purpose of God. That's world as far as John is concerned. John is writing. So whoever is born of God overcomes the world. He overcomes the darkness that is in the world. Overcomes anything that's in the world that is contrary to God. That is contrary, opposite, or opposing the ways, the will, and the purposes of God. God is saying, you will overcome. You've been born to overcome. You are not an undergoer. You are an overcomer. That's the word of God. But it happens when you and I walk in faith. I want you to, use the I want you to notice the language used in verse 4. This is the victory that has overcome. Even our faith. You know what God has said? God said, Faith is the winner. So you can imagine a football game. Two people are going to uh, play the football. And even before the game starts, team A is the winner. 7-0. It's the winner. Okay, guys, now go play. And that's what God has declared. He said, faith has overcome. In other words, if you and I walk by faith, victory over this world is guaranteed as far as God is concerned. Faith has overcome. Amen? Now, the 90 minutes may be intense. The 90 minutes may be hard. The 90 minutes may have its ups and downs. But the end result, God said, faith has overcome the world. Walk by faith. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. So faith is important for you and me as believers to walk in it so we can walk as overcomers as God desired for us to be. Number five. Faith is our shield against the enemy. And we know these scriptures of vision 6 and verse 16. Let's read it together. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So he says, take the shield of faith. Now I remember we've studied this Ephesians 6 in detail. Uh, the shield, and, and Paul is drawing from the uh, weaponry of the armor of, of the Roman soldier during his time. So the shield was really uh, uh, made of several layers of skin. Kin that you know sewed together, so it was a thick uh, shield of skin, and they would soak this shield in water uh, to um, to keep it moist, so that the next day when they go out into battle, uh, the enemy would shoot arrows with you know uh, with fire, lighted arrows against their opponents. So here you're going out the shield of faith. The shield wasn't a small little decorative shield; they had a separate a kind of shield for decorative purposes. But the shield they used in warfare was a full-length full shield. So it protected the person entirely. And you're going out against the enemy. And the fiery darts come in. They impinge on the, the soaked uh, hide leather. And it quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. But if you remember, we also said that that shield had to be maintained. Because it was leather, if you just let it dry, it would become brittle and break. So part of the Roman soldier's responsibility was to oil, massage oil into that, that, that skin, that leather. Keep it from uh, drying up and uh, cracking and breaking. 
So that's, you keep your shield well oiled, you keep it strong, keep it well nourished. In the weeks to come, we'll talk about how to exercise faith and how to develop our faith in God, how to develop strong faith in God. But that's our responsibility. But what God is saying is this, that if you keep your shield of faith out, it will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Amen? Now, you know, it's not going to prevent the fiery darts by being fired. The enemy is going to do his job. He's going to fire those darts. But with your shield of faith, you will be able to quench, extinguish, put to nothing those fiery darts that come against you. Whether it's a dart of temptations, uh, opposition, whatever it is, the enemy is firing, it will quench. The shield of faith will quench it. Or we know in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, Peter writes, he says, Be sober. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Verse 9, let's read it together. Resist him, being steadfast in the faith. How do you resist the devil? You be firm in your faith. Yes, he's about like a roaring lion looking for opportunity uh, 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 to come in and, 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 and get us in a surprise. But the Bible says you be strong in your faith. You resist him. Be firm in your faith in God. You hold on to the promise of God. You hold on to the word of God. My God is true to his word. His word will not fail. I hold on to his word. You be firm in your faith. and You can resist the enemy. So number six. We receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, God promised way back in Joel's time. In Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29. He says, in the last days... I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And I'll pour out my spirit on every person. So that's a promise that God made. The promise of his spirit. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Right? And Jesus repeated that several times. He said, when I go to heaven, I will send the promise of my father. He says, wait in Jerusalem. I'll send the promise of my father. So he's saying, look, the promise of the father. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He says, available to all. But how do we receive? He says, we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. It's by faith. You know, two Sundays ago, which is, you know, every other, every other month we do our Holy Spirit baptism service. So on Sunday, the 3rd of March, we had six of these young people sitting here. We stayed back. And I was so excited because it's so nice to see young people get baptized in the Holy Ghost, Right? And so excited, like we can pass this on to the next generation and they're going to be speaking in tongues and they're going to grow up in this. You know? So we shared the word, prayed for all of them. And, and, and I, was just, I just remember the testament, this one young man, he's sitting right here right now. So. <laughs> but he came, he said, uh, each one was sharing their experience of what happened. So he said this, he said, when I came and sat here, I did not believe in this. I didn't believe in speaking in tongues. But he sat and listened. About 15 minutes later, he had tears in his eyes. He was speaking in tongues. He said, I felt the presence of God, and I'm speaking in tongues. 15 minutes back, he didn't believe. Now he was speaking. What made the difference? Just the simple word of God. Just share it with the word. This is what the Bible says. Let's pray. Tuck. Amen. So God did it. We receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. By faith. Oh, each one of us can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and enjoying the gifts of the Holy Ghost in, in our lives. But it just takes that little bit of faith. And it leads us to the next point, number seven. We exercise spiritual gifts. We minister God's power and we see miracles by faith. See, as a church, we just want to be like the church in the book of Acts. And then we want to see God move in us and through us and see the mighty works of God take place through each of our lives. And we want to go beyond that because Acts was the beginning and it was not the end. And God always finishes much better than he started. The glory of the latter house is greater than that of the former. So you look at the former house, the book of Acts. 
the V, the Latter Day Church, going to be stronger than the Book of Church and the Book of Acts. And we're journeying into it. But what's it going to take to see the 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 the, the flow of the gifts of the Spirit, to see the power of God, to see the miracles of God? It takes faith. Romans 12. Let's refer a few verses on this. Romans 12 verse 6. Paul writes, he says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. See the gift of prophecy. It says, let's exercise those gifts. Let's use it. But it is exercised in proportion to our Faith. That means faith is involved in the exercise of this gift and you will have a greater flow, a greater measure of accuracy and a greater, a measure, a greater expression of this gift in, with greater faith. It's in proportion to your faith. But faith is involved in the exercise of this gift. I'll look at what Paul wrote in Galatians. In Galatians chapter 3 verses 2, 3 and 5 Paul says, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How did you receive the Holy Spirit? It was by faith. And this is true even today. Now, for the Galatians, the works of the Lord meant following the law. But for us today, Pentecostals and with a, uh, with a history of Pentecostalism, you know, we create our own works. You have to tarry five days. <laughs> you have to, you know, really clean up your life completely. Now listen. God is the great sanctifier. And when he comes, he will do the work of cleaning up. Amen. So don't put these rules on people. Because we receive the promise of the Spirit not by work. But by faith. It's His grace from our side, faith. Amen. So we receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. It goes on. Verse 3 Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Look at verse 5. Therefore, He that is God, who supplies, or he who dispenses, who makes available the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? What is the answer to that? It is by faith. In other words, he's saying God is going to release a move of his Holy Spirit, release the uh, uh, administer his spirit, release or make available to us his spirit. And God is going to work miracles among us, not in response to the works we've done, but in response to our faith. Amen. In other words, you know, it's not like God, look, I, I, God, I prayed seven hours today, so you have to do something. Or God, I fasted three days, so you have to do something. Praying is good. I'm not saying don't pray. We pray a lot. I'm not saying don't fast. Fasting is good. Uh, I'm not saying don't read your Bible. Reading the Bible is good. All those are good. But God is not going to move because of the works. He's going to move because of faith. So I'm not saying don't do it. Do it. But don't do it because you want to qualify for something. You're already qualified. Right? Colossians 1 verse 12. He has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You're already qualified. Now you do it because you're qualified. You want to grow. You want to develop. You want to mature. All of that is good. But God releases the move of his spirit. God works miracles amongst us in response to faith. So when we gather together, we come with anticipation. We come with expectation. God, we want you to see you do things in our midst. We want to see souls saved. We want to see people brought into the kingdom of God. We want to see people come and receive healing, come and receive deliverance. We want to see people come in and receive a word from God that will change their lives. We want to see those things because God, we are coming with faith and expectation. And God responds to that. Amen? Amen? So come with that. And that's what sees our, our births, um, the miracles and wonders uh, amongst us. And uh, just refer to one more verse in Acts 3 and verse 16. Uh, you know the story as uh, 
Peter and John have, were about to walk into the temple one afternoon uh, for their usual time of prayer. They see this lame man who's been lame there for 40 years. Uh, he's been there begging. And on that particular day, uh, Peter says, look on us. So this man is looking. He has some expectation, but he's not sure what, to, what he's going to get. So he looks expectantly towards Peter and John. And Peter says, silver and gold I do not have. But whatever I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That was his day. I'm sure Peter and John passed by that road, passed by that entrance several times. The Lord Jesus Christ himself passed by that entrance several times as they walked into the temple in Jerusalem. But that day something changed for this man. And later on in Acts chapter 3 and verse 16, Peter explains how it happened. He says, his name, let's read it together. His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. So what is Peter saying? His name, the name of Jesus. You see, each one of us has the right to use that name. Let's say this together. I have the right to use the name of Jesus. So Peter is saying, his name. You see, that name, and we will be doing a study on the name of Jesus towards the end of this year. We have planned to do that. But it's so wonderful to know the power, the authority in the name of Jesus. This name is higher than any other name. At the mention of that name, miracles happen. At the mention of that name, demons bow. Right? His name. Now, as a believer, when you say the name of Jesus, what does it mean? It's not a clue to the other believer to say amen. That's not why we use the name of Jesus. When you say in Jesus' name, it means you are saying, I am here representing him. I'm standing here in his place to act on his behalf and to do what he would do if he were here. That's what it means when you say in Jesus' name. So when people come for prayer to you and you lay hands on them and you say in Jesus' Jesus name you are saying I am standing here representing Jesus I'm standing before you on his behalf I am standing here to do what he would do if he were here himself in Jesus name that's what it means it's the power of attorney it's an authorization from heaven from Jesus Christ himself to every child of God to every believer to go do what he would do if he were walking on this earth today that's the authorization that lies on you right now and you've got the authority to use that name so Peter is saying his name but we don't use his name as a lucky charm Sky is blue, grass is green. Both statements are true. But you don't say, don't use it like a lucky charm, right? But you use it with what? Faith in his name. You've got to have faith in that name. I know this name is about every name. I know at this name, the sickness has no chance. We are not sitting at a negotiating table to have a discussion. That option is not there. His name. Through faith in his name. Sickness, disease, pain, infirmity, works of the enemy have only one option. They have to bow to the name of Jesus. So his name. Through faith in his name. Faith given to us from God. So we've been talking about the faith of God. The God kind of faith. Faith that God puts in our hearts. Faith given to us from God has made this man whole. Amen. And it only takes that mustard seed of faith, Jesus said, to move the mountain. But faith is important for us to see this. And last, and we're getting ready to close. Number eight. We must fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. See, we are engaged in conflict. So we are in this earth. We are in a fight. 
And he says, fight the good fight of faith. Now, why does he call it a good fight? A good fight is a fight that's worth fighting for. Right? I said, there's no point in fighting. A good fight is a fight worth, some battles are not worth fighting. Don't waste your time. Just walk away from it. Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't amount to anything. But this fight is a good fight. It's worth engaging in. It's worth being there. Fighting the good fight of faith. Another reason why it's a good fight is because it's a fight that you know you're going to win. Amen? Because God already said faith has overcome. So you know you're going to win. So it's worth fighting. But this fight is a fight of faith. So this fight of faith means it's a fight for faith and it's a fight in faith. It's a fight for faith. I mean, the one thing the devil wants to get out of you is your faith in God. That's what he's after. He wants to get us, give up our faith in God. But you're saying, I will not, devil. I will not. I refuse to give up on my faith in God. Amen. Now Job, when he, in his time, he did not have the revelation you and I have. But in spite of that, here's what Job said. Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Now, to clarify, God was not after Job's life. God was not trying to kill Job. So Job didn't know that. So he just said, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. But that's the degree of commitment. He said, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to keep my faith in God. Even if God was to kill me, I'll keep my faith in him. So devil, do what you want. I fight the fight of I fight for faith. And I fight in faith. I'm standing firm in my faith. I'm not letting go of my faith. I'm fighting from faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Now I'm just sure you can add to this list of other reasons why um, faith is so important. As believers, it's our walk of faith. And faith has an integral part in our life. We journey by faith. And just to just quickly recap here. We are saved by grace through faith. Everything must be done in faith. Faith's the key to receiving from God. It's the means to gain victory over the world. Everything that comes in opposition to God. Faith is our shield against the enemy. We receive the promise of the spirit by faith. We exercise spiritual gifts. We see God's power. We see miracles by faith. We must fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So in the weeks to come. We'll talk about how to exercise faith in God. We saw last Sunday the steps of the faith of Abraham coming Sunday. We'll talk about how to exercise faith in God. Uh, thereafter, we'll talk about how to develop strong faith in God. What goes in to developing a strong faith in God. So uh, let's keep journeying in this together. And I want you to come into a place where you understand this is how I'm to exercise my faith in God. This is what I'm going to do in any situation. I'm going to Act in faith. I'm going to respond to circumstances, situations, life through and by my faith in God. Amen. I call our worship team up, please. We're going to take a few moments to just worship God and um, maybe get ready to close. Some of us may have been attending church for quite some time. Some of us may be very new to, to church, to this whole thing about Jesus Christ, but I want to just take a few minutes right now before we close to share this with us. The Bible tells us that all of us need to be saved. We need Jesus Christ in our lives because we've sinned. We've done things that are wrong and sin becomes this big barrier between us and God. And so we cannot experience God because sin is a barrier. God's a holy God. We're sinful. Sin is a barrier. 
But the good news of the Bible is that God himself came into this world. What we couldn't do for us, he, ourselves, he did for us. God came into this world, become, became a man, and he paid the penalty for sin. And this is what differentiates Jesus Christ from everyone else. Every other man or woman born was born in sin. They had their own sins to pay for. They had, they had their own sins to account for. But when God became a man, he lived a sinless life. He had no sin. And on the cross, the Bible tells us, Jesus bore our sins on himself. The sins of the whole world. He paid for our sins. He paid for the sins of the whole world. He was buried. Three days later, he rose up from the dead. He showed himself alive to his disciples. There were 500 eyewitnesses who saw him alive. It passed any court. And then he ascended to heaven and he commissioned his disciples to go into the whole world and tell them this good news. That whoever believes in him, Will receive forgiveness of sins and that's what we began with this morning God is offering salvation as a free gift to anyone who believes in Jesus Christ you don't have to pay for it you don't have to earn it you don't have to work for it you don't have to go on a pilgrimage for it you don't have to sacrifice this or that for it the one sacrifice has been made on the cross and through simple faith in Jesus you can be saved the Bible says your sins will be forgiven and you will be made a child of God. So I want, to, I want to lead us in a simple prayer. Could we close our eyes, please? Just bow our heads. If there's anyone here this morning, you have never received Jesus into your life. You've never received, experienced the forgiveness of your sins and God's free gift of salvation. This morning can be your moment to receive. If you will simply believe in Jesus Christ, have faith in Jesus, you will receive salvation. Is what the Bible teaches us. And if you'd like to do that, I invite you to pray this simple prayer with me to place your faith in Christ Jesus alone. If you've never done this before, just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. I believe you died for me on the cross. That you rose up again. That you're alive today. Come into my life. Make me a new person. And help me follow you the rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed this prayer with us this morning, and if it was your first time, and you did that with me this morning, if you don't mind, we want to celebrate with you. So could you raise your hand? You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time this morning. Just raise your hand where you are. We want to celebrate with you. Any hands up here this morning? Just raise your hand up. If you prayed this prayer with me, very first time this morning. Anybody here? Just raise your hand up. Anyone up in the balcony? Okay. I don't see any hands here. But if you prayed this prayer with me this morning for the very first time, on all our exits, as you go out, you'll find people with a red bag. It's our gift to you. If you prayed that prayer, made the decision this morning. Just tell them, I prayed that prayer, and i like to have that back. They'll give it to you. There's a little card that says decision card. Just write your name and number, and they'll give you this bag, and then we will call you from the church office, and we'll guide you how to use the resources that are in that bag. Let's rise to our feet, please, as we get ready to close. Let's take a few moments just to worship Jesus and just welcome his presence here. I want to, I want to close this time just praying over each of us, just praying over, over us, just believing God for his interventions in our lives. Let's prepare our hearts as we sing and expect, expect miracles. I know we did that earlier this morning, but I want you to just pray and expect God to touch you. Your faith in God, your simple faith in God 
will bring healing, will bring deliverance, will set you free from oppression, bondages, will bring God's intervention in your life. Take a few moments now this morning to extend your faith towards God. Father, I just pray over your people right now. We stand here. We've heard your word. God, we extend our faith to you right now. Right now. God, whether 
People are praying for healing in their bodies, their situations and circumstances. We extend you, our faith toward you, Father. Your word has gone forth. And Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will confirm your word right now in this place with healings, with miracles, with signs, with wonders that you do amongst your people. Even as I pray right now, I want you to pray. I want you to expect God to touch you. Uh, do this with expectation. Don't do this as a routine thing. Do this with expectation. And I also want you to put your faith to work. Put your faith into action. There's sickness, pain, disease in your body. I want you to check your body. I want you to check and say, God, I'm expecting uh, something better, something better right now to happen in my body as we pray. I want you to check. Remember what Jesus did when he ministered to people. He told them to stretch out their hand. He told them to rise up and walk. He told them to do something that they couldn't do. I want you in response to that same word, do something you couldn't do in, as, in, as an act of your faith as we pray right now. If there are situations that you want God to turn around, you want Jesus to turn around, pray over that. Say, God, I want you to do this in my life. And of course, you need to go back and check it. But this moment you receive by faith. Father, I stand here before you in Jesus' name, spraying and speaking over every person listening, watching us live wherever they are right now in the name of Jesus we take authority over every sickness every disease, every ailment every infirmity, we cast it off of their bodies in the name of Jesus, Satan I destroy your works I destroy your works in the name of Jesus, I release God's people from every form of oppression in their mind or their body every form of oppression over their homes over their families over their marriages over circumstances situations i release them from every oppressive work of the enemy and god's word says that faith has overcome by faith we overcome situations we overcome circumstances we overcome we push back mountains we overcome disappointments we overcome setbacks by faith, we advance right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your healing word just flow in this place right now. Just go ahead. If you had an injury in your ankle and feet below that ankle's area and your feet, just begin to move. Maybe the doctors have attended to you and that's good. But there's pain, there's problem. Just begin to move your ankle and your feet and just say, is, check if God is doing something. Sometimes you might feel the presence of God and that's good. Just respond to that. Act in faith. And act in faith. Now, if, if God is doing something for you right now, we want you to know about it. So just... I uh, just, you know, maybe raise your hand and say, you know, God is doing something in my body. We want to see that. We want to see if God is touching you, healing you right now. Just raise your hand wherever you are. Let's know that God is doing something for you right now. Just raise your hand and say, like, I can feel better. Something has happened in my body right this moment as we pray. Just lift your hand up and we will, we can notice what God is doing. And we can Anybody here? God has done something for you right now. Something has happened in your body. Just raise your hand see that. I see one hand. Anybody else? Anybody else? God has done something for you right now. Anybody else? Just raise your hand. God bless you. Anyone else? I see another hand way up in the balcony. God bless you. Put your hand down. God bless you. Now go back. Check it. You know, God's healing, God's touch can stand the test of doctors. Can stand it. The test. Go back. Check it. When you have a testimony, you can email it to us or you so that we can give you the opportunity to share the testimony with other people so people will know what God is doing in our midst. Amen? So let's get ready to close and we thank God for what He's done. Father, thank you that you respond to faith in the hearts of your people. Thank you for what has happened and what will happen as we see God. You work in our midst in response to our simple faith. Thank you, Father. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each one of us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us this morning. Others of you need prayer, we'll be available right here to pray with you personally, minister to you. You're dismissed. Have a great Sunday. Amen.
and see you again. A bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.